already done it. And I got your little boo telling me she love me. I got this one, that one, damn, it's gonna be a long night. Hello guys, what is up? It is me, Prince of Otis, back here with another video. What if Deku had Whitebeard's powers? Part 1. This is the special. And before I get into anything, obviously, thank you so much for 21k. Not a big deal, considering other channels are getting like way more and way more, but this is special to me. Thank y'all so much for sticking around and supporting your boy. And keep doing that. Those of you who are watching right now, if you watch but are if you watch regularly but aren't uh, subscribed, I know I haven't posted like banger stuff in a while, but this is it. So if you wouldn't mind, just like and subscribe real quick, you know, just just hit that hit that button real quick and um, tell me what else you want me to do. Uh, I'm going to be trying to get back into Naruto with us again. And then I'm going to try a the slime anime. What like, you know, I'm going to I'm going to try a slime anime. What if and I'm going to have some fun with it because this one has to do with the boy, the God Gojo. So that shit is going to be real fun to actually do. And without any further ado, let's get into the actual story. Not all men are born equal. That is the first thing a young Bakugo Katsuki realized when he met Izuku Midoriya. We find a bruised up Bakugo lying on the ground alongside his goons who seem even more messed up than him and the one who had beaten them up would bend over to look down at them, more specifically Bakugo. Know your place, you bastard, and then Gerdeku would say. To find out how things end up this way, we're going to go back about one year ago, when Deku first came to school. As he stands before his new class, a four-year-old Deku with a wide smile would say, Nice to meet ya, Mizuku Midoriya. His voice carried power and charisma that made everyone react with a big hello, and Deku looked to his teacher, who said that he was supposed to be sitting by Bakugo. And so Deku goes and sits down, saying hi to some of those around him, and then he says hi to Bakugo, who would say hi back. Hey, you like heroes, Deku would ask. Bakugo's face were brightened up as he says that All Might is the best, and the kids all agree, but Deku would think otherwise. Really? I like Hawks better. Or Eraserhead. I know Hawks, but who's Eraserhead? One of the kids would ask, and Deku's about to tell them, but the teacher says that class is about to begin, so he says that he will fill them in during recess. Everyone liked Deku, he was approachable, had confidence, but he wasn't egotistical or anything, and after their class ended for a while, they went to recess, and everyone gathered for Deku to talk about Eraserhead. And as Deku sat on the monkey bars and everyone was, everyone was in front of him, he would speak. Eraser's head's an underground hero. He's not flashy or anything, but when he fights, he's so badass and his quirk is awesome. He can cancel out people's quirks. Wow, that is so cool. How does he do it? They would ask. And Deku then went on to tell them about it. And even Bakugo listened. And after all that, uh, they didn't ask Deku if he had gotten his quirk yet. And he smiled as he would then hold his hand out. And one, he would ha hold his hands out. And one would sparkle with red lighting and create a black coat of armor around it. And the other would be covered by a transparent sort of bubble. Half tremor, half cancel. They all become wide eyed to see Deku had two quirks. And he says that he looks, and they say that he looks awesome, asking what the quirks are. Deku's hands then go back to normal as he says, I can cancel quirks when I touch attacks or people. Also, I'm real strong, so I can do this. He would then slam his foot into the ground, causing the ground below them to quake as all the kids then fall to their butts and see cracks form for where Deku uh, stomped. And he would say, if I try to use it too much, uh, bad stuff can happen. You can see why I don't do it often. This, once again, amazes those who were with him and the other kids who were just playing around, of course, didn't you know notice this quake. So Deku went over to apologize for bothering them. And as he was, and he was doing the same to the teachers, as he's going out nervously apologizing, Bakugo would just be left in awe. He's really strong. I wonder what my quirk's gonna be. As if by coincidence, the very next day, Bakugo actually got his quirk and was really praised for it. But while he is being noticed, he noticed that Deku wasn't around um, even paying attention. As a matter of fact, he was outside and he would notice that um, he was training his quirk. Well, I guess he wouldn't care if he has two quirks, Bakugo would think. As days went on, however, Bakugo began to change, straying from the path of a hero and beginning to terrorize his classmates one by one. That is, until one day when he tried to mess with someone Deku knew, and he had a quirk that allowed him to elongate his fingers, but it was very short, it didn't have that much range. As Deku walks out of class, he sees Bakugo harassing him with his goons, and he sees none of the kids were going to do anything. Hey, you deaf or something? As Bakugo says this, he then feels a tap on his shoulder and would turn, asking what? Just as he is surprised to see Deku, who then decks him in the face, sending him flying over the head of Deku's friend before he then crashes into the ground. The scared and surprised goons of Bakugo are then grabbed by the face before having their heads slammed into the ground, and in this instant, their bodies are shot by tremors all over, causing them to scream in pain before Deku then lets them go. You okay? 
His friend would then nod and, and Deku would smile, telling him to get out of here. And as he does, thanking him, Deku would then walk to Bakugo, who would stagger up, asking why the hell Deku did that. He's just some weak nobody. The hell's wrong with you? Deku at this point would then pop a vein. The hell do you mean some nobody? Don't touch my people, you bastard. Bakugo would then feel a chill run down his spine, and at this moment, he's feeling fear, but then this fear is replaced by anger. Who the hell do you think you are, you half and half bat? His words are then cut off by Deku slamming another punch into his face, before then throwing one into his stomach and making him float off the ground, before he then gets kicked in the face by a hockey-filled attack, and he is sent crashing once more, before then turning to face the sky in a daze. And this is when Deku walks over and bends over, saying, Know your place, you bastard. Bakugo after this comes to hate Deku, but Deku doesn't just let him stay as an asshole. He reforms him and makes Bakugo realize how much of a brat he was being. To Deku, Bakugo isn't just some villain of the weak to be or something. He saw him as a rowdy little bro, and in this version of events, he is slightly older than him, so it kind of carries a bit more weight. So they grow as friends, not equals in strength, but equals in uh, anything else because strength is obviously not everything. If it was, their friendship would be very vague. Bakugo does use Deku to get stronger though, and when Deku grows, he does as well. Bakugo's power overall grows in terms of technique, especially when he had to train against a monster like Deku, who is a natural force of nature. He learns how it's her impact much earlier, AP shot, and learns a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and he had to learn to dodge a lot, and you can guess why. As for Deku, his uh, quirk, which I will be calling the Tremor Tremor, uh, yeah, I'm gonna call it that for now. His Tremor Tremor quirk allows him to not only break and quick the earth and her humans, but also punch through air itself and cause shockwaves, so that's all he can do right now, that's what he's attained. And his hockey, which is the other side of his quirk, allows him to release a pressure that knocks out people if they are weak will. That's what his quirk is described as in this world. And he is very physically powerful. And he can now also see a bit for like further because of his observation and can cover objects with hockey to fight. But he's more of a physical combatant um, as much as he hates to be a physical combatant because he wants to be like Aizawa. It's just his thing. So, yeah. So years later, when the two are 14, they have taken another step forward towards their dream. And they have, of course, signed up for UA. And as they walk home from, as they walk home after school, the two will be talking about going to see a movie later on. The hell is up with you in anime movies, Bakugo would ask. And Deku would say, what the hell is up with you in a horror flicks? It's like you're trying to piss yourself to bed. Maybe you're just a little scared. Anime can be scary. Besides, it gives me inspiration. Look, he then takes out a pencil from his pocket and Bakugo then watches as A becomes enshrouded in his tremor sphere before Deku then points it forward, causing a, uh, a crack that releases a small shockwave. The hell, Bakugo would say, as Deku would then say, see? Or maybe just like the fan service, Bakugo would say, and Deku says, there's nothing wrong with that. And he says this with the straightest face, making Bakugo burst into laughter as he calls him a weeb, and Deku tells him to shut up. As he does this, he then uh, Deku then gets a text on his phone, and his face becomes instantly serious as he says he needs to leave, and he runs off as Bakugo then asks what's wrong. Mom's cooking tonight, and no, you can't have my leftovers. Damn it, Bakugo would think. As Deku runs home, he then decides to take a shortcut under a bridge, and as he runs under it, he starts to feel something, but then ignores it and keeps running. That is until he finds a shadow covering his, and turns to see the sludge villain. Seems like we're both in a hurry, kid. Maybe you could- Before the sludge could even do anything, Deku does not entertain his monologue, and would close the distance between them, and he throws a punch with his tremor sphere covering his hand, and as he makes an impact, a crack would appear and spreads, as the sludge is then blown away by a giant shockwave, and it splatters all over the area, while its body starts to steam. I ain't got time for you people. He then quickly dashes out of uh, out of there, heading home, and minutes later, uh, as he leaves, is when All Might would land near the tunnel. And as he slowly walks in, he finds the defeated villain and raises an eyebrow. We're not having the best day, are you? He would say with a smile. Quickly, he would then scoop up the villain and put him in soda bottles, so his job is done, but he is curious as to who stopped the villain. Their ability may be similar to mine to do this kind of damage. Meanwhile, the one who had done this arrives home and opens uh, the door of his home and his house and he enters as his uh, nose then catches a whiff of something delicious and from the kitchen, Inko would then yell, it's ready, hell yeah, Deku would yell as he then closes the door behind and quickly goes to the kitchen where Deku, um, well, he, where Inko then hands him a bowl of katsudan, sorry, and Inko would then say, jeez, are they not feeding you at school? They never have enough for me, Deku would say. He then takes the bowl and starts eating it while telling his mom that he plans to go to UA and she would then ask, oh, when's the exam? Deku by this point then sits at the dining room table and says that it's in about 6 months, to which Inko says good. You better get in, or it'll be a waste of time. You can count on me, Deku would say. Time skips 6 months. Because he is so strong, Deku is included in the recommended group of students who test for UA, and he got a letter about it a few days early just to let him know. 
him and Bakugo train until the day comes and the day of the exam. Bakugo comes to Deku's house and they leave together. And as they walk past many other students who are here to test, uh, he can they can tell that they have some jitters. Um, obviously, it's UA. And they soon part ways as Bakugo then wishes him good luck because the exam is coming up tomorrow for him. So it's not his day. Destroy him, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it, Deku would say. He then goes to the auditorium and he finds a seat by Inasa and more recommended students begin to enter. Inasa notices Deku and he also notices how much bigger than uh, bigger than him he was and for the heck of it he says, Hello, my name is Inasa. Oh, sup, Izuku. The two would then shake hands as if already having a mutual understanding of one another even though they've never met before just as Inasa's eyes then trail off to see Todoroki enter the room. And the other students who notice him do so by instinct as well since he is Endeavor's son. Who the hell is that? Deku would ask. And some people would then look at him as if he was an idiot before then getting death stared by him and they would look away making Inasa laugh. You seriously don't know him? He's Endeavor's son. Seriously? Well, I don't get what everyone's getting so hard on about. It's all about how much you do in the moment. With his eyes brimming with excitement, Deku would then say that he looks forward to Todoroki and what he will do. And Inasa gets riled up by this look and he would yell that he's excited and everyone obviously hears this. And this is when Midnight would walk in. I know you're excited, but try to stay calm, alright? As she arrives, Inasa would then apologize some of the boys starting to blush, making girls feel like they're purrs, but then they also feel like they're not much different because I, I'm like, Midnight is for everybody. They get in the feels too, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, Midnight would then say, all right, things are a bit different here. As she would then slap her uh, whip onto the podium. So pay attention, all right? She then goes to explain the rules of the test for the recommendation part and they begin and the written uh, exams are up first and then they move on to the practical test. Much like the normal exams, they are split into a sort of quadrant, but the practical exam is an obstacle race, similar to the one at the UA Sports Festival, but it's a little less dangerous. President Mike would then walk out in front of the students waiting at, uh, waiting at the gate, and he starts to talk. Alright folks, now we move on to the practical exams. When you hear a number called up, step up to the exam site, alright? Deku has the number 19 and is called to his site, uh, being with Todoroki, Inasa, Juzo, and two other participants. I will not name them. They stand at the starting line while light signals would be set up to tell them when to go and President Mike and all the others would be, uh, other participants would be watching from outside the site on a monitor. When they are allowed to go instantly, Inasa, Deku and Todoroki take the lead but what makes it even more amazing for everyone and even Todoroki and Inasa is that Deku is only running and he's still keeping up with them. Damn, this kid's something else President Mike would think as Inasa would then laugh saying Deku's amazing. Deku however would then grow a big smile. I'm just getting started. As he takes his next step, he would then burst with red lightning as his legs then get covered with a black and red tinted sort of color before he then blasts past the two in an instant and he meets a three-pointer which stands in his way but while he runs, he punches forward causing a crack to form in the air and a shockwave makes the robot explode and a giant earthquake would occur reaching all the way to those watching from outside. Luckily, they are not falling into the ground or anything. Jesus, that guy can cause earthquakes? That's way too OP that people will be saying. And this takes some of the other partici uh, participants off balance, such as Todoroki because his ice actually shatters, but it allows Inasa and two others, um, Juzo, to follow along and to pass by him. But quickly, he would then get back into his original spot. Does he have two quirks as well, he thought? Those quakes are something that'll ruin my trail. This is going to be tough. Deku, meanwhile, reaches into the sights like farther and farther, and with the laugh, he would just keep busting through robots, even just using sheer physical strength, leaving everyone impressed as he then meets another three-pointer, he would then jump and land on its head before then leaping forward, causing it to get crushed to the ground, causing another massive quake that catches his uh, competition off guard. And Deku would say, <laughs> you gotta try harder than that. Come at me, come on. As he yells this, the heroes then that are present watching this from like their own space are just left astonished by his pure power and brute strength as well as his agility despite being so huge and these just insanely overpowered abilities. That kid's kind of fitting my style, America would say. What you think, Snipe? Snipe would then say, maybe for you, he'd be too much for me to handle. But he's talented nonetheless to be able to get that type of dangerous power under his control. Endeavor even finds this kid interesting as someone he wants to have and like he kind of hates it because he just wants to have Todoroki be the main star. But Deku and Inasa and even Juzu and the other participants were very good. Had I not seen his face, you would think that Brett was all my. He's like a replica of him, the hero would think. By the way, Deku is like uh, six foot five, and he's still growing and muscularly kind of lean. So he comes off as intimidating until you get to know him. And he, when he makes, when he stares you down, obviously you won't get scared. He also has long hair, which he has tied up into a ponytail. Just wanted to say that. 
Regardless, Deku was already near the end of the race, which was um, already past a set record, and it had only been five, uh, four minutes, while others were still like 20 minutes away. So Nezu would up the ante to see what Deku would do. As Deku continues to run, he starts to feel the ground shake as a huge shadow then covers the sun from reaching him, and he looks up to see a giant zero pointer rear its ugly head from behind some buildings, making some watchers think that Yue really doesn't give a damn when it comes to things like this. Momo then thought, considering his power, he should not be able to do much. Uh, maybe the best choice is to. What is he doing? Already, Deku would then leap forward towards the giant monstrosity with a smile. Only I can shake the world. Don't you ever act cocky in front of me! He cocks back his fist as he then forms a tremor sphere, which then explodes with black lightning as he then slowly reaches the robot and it goes to swing at him with its gigantic hand. But it is then met by a punch from Deku, and to everyone's shock, another crack occurs, and this not only blows out the entire arm, but his entire body would just ripple out, just like literally be crushed as a shockwave would then ripple out, destroying the terrain and leveling the ground for miles on end. Impossible, Momo thought. He really punched it to oblivion? This would make Momo blush a little bit, so because it was like kind of illogical, and yet Deku didn't even care and did the most ridiculous thing. It was just something that she found kind of attractive. I'm not making this a Momo Deku ship. I just want to, it makes sense. It's kind of cool, okay? There's no need to make it a ship. I'm not making this a ship. Anyway, as Deku lands down, he would still be laughing like a maniac, making all the heroes become definite in their choice. And he quickly uh, arrives at the end in five minutes. Hell yeah, first place. He would then turn, however, and see that no one else is here yet. And he would then shrug his shoulders as he sits down cross-legged. He then watches as Inasa arrives first, um, just as Todoroki arrives behind, and he gets second, and in about like 15 minutes later, and then Juzo and the others like are still like kind of behind. And as they're waiting, Inasa would then just like grab Deku's hand saying, dude, the hell? Deku would then laugh saying it's nothing compared to when he gets serious, and Todoroki is caught off guard by this, thinking that was him playing around. Inasa with a nervous mouth would then say, that's insane. What's your quirk anyway? I have two. It's called Tremor Tremor. Well, next time I'll beat you, Inasa would say. Deku would then laugh once again, saying he's looking forward to it, as he then looks to Todoroki, saying he was pretty creative about how he used his ice, but Todoroki ignores him, saying nothing more, causing Deku and Inasa to pop veins. He's so freaking rude, they would both think. After this, Inasa and Deku begin to talk to know each other more, and the others come and arrive, so they're all good. And ironically, Deku also takes notice of Momo, and, you know, first off, she's hot, but also the way she uses her quirk is very creative, and he can respect that. He's not falling in love or some shit. Not a shit. After all of that, the interviews are then uh, con uh, conducted. I don't know what the interviews are about. They didn't really give much detail about it in the manga or in the anime, so sorry, but I guess they're going to ask them certain questions about why they want to be heroes and stuff like that. Just imagine it yourself. And everyone leaves, having etched the actions of Deku into their minds. And on the way, while he talks to Inasa, Deku actually sees Momo walking into a limo waiting for her. And while interested in, you know, the fact that she's a rich girl, however, she seemed busy. So he heads home and he doesn't really say anything. And Inasa and him just continue to talk. After this, Deku then arrives home. And as he opens the door, he sees Mitsuki talking with Inko and instantly becomes serious. He's here, isn't he? In my room? Mitsuki would then nod and instantly Deku would then run while apologizing as he then makes a vase almost fall with all the shaking is causing but Inko reflexively catches it and puts it back where it was. What am I going to do with that boy she would say and Mitsuki would then say you can always let him come with us on our trip later. it will let him go a little bit wild you know he kind of needs it. Inko would then consider this asking if she can come as well and Mitsuki says sure. Meanwhile Deku reaches his door after running up some steps and he opens it to see Bakugo playing his PS4 and he turns to face him. You joining Bakugo with us? And Deku quickly then throws his backpack aside and he sits beside him. How are we doing? I've been on the same level for like an hour. As they continue to play, soon night falls and the next day would come. And then another day passes until Bakugo finally takes his test. And well, the day before I'm being, you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, he takes his test and then later uh, Deku goes and picks up Bakugo before they go to UA when the school day was approaching. They have both turned 15 now, by the way. So, they find class 1A, and they slide the doors open and see their new classmates, and as he enters, everyone can see a lot, like, they can notice how huge Deku is, he has a huge stature, but he doesn't even notice it, as he then finds a seat on the other side of the class, as Bakugo would then sit in front of him. What well, hero thinks is going to be dealing with us, Bakugo would ask. Whoever it is, I just hope they're interesting, Deku would say. He must be one of the recommended kids, like that kid over there, Kirishima would say to Mina, who agrees. 
At this point, Ida would then walk up to Bakugo as he says he should not put his foot on the table because, well, it's disrespectful. And Bakugo would say, why the hell shouldn't I? It's proper etiquette not to. We must respect UA and everything about its facilities. Dude, it's just a desk. Put your foot down, Deku would say. You're doing the same thing, you bastard, Bakugo would yell. As Deku was surprised as he didn't even notice that he was doing that, putting his own leg on the desk, making everyone chuckle. But then he puts his foot down and Bakugo would do the same. There, you happy, Bakugo would ask. Ida would then push up his glasses and nod, just as Uraraka would then walk in, recognizing Bakugo, and would wave to him with him waving back. She would then come up and thank Bakugo because she heard about what he did to help her by giving her some of his points to let her pass. And also, Bakugo in this um, event, in these events, actually saved her. I really thought I was done after the whole rubble thing went down on me, and whoa. She would then notice Deku barely fitting in his seat, and she would then think that Deku was very strong looking and intimidating. Something wrong, Deku would ask? Oh, it's nothing, she would say. If you're hunting for buddies, this may not be the best place for you. Mineta, with a look of confusion, then says, Is that a freaking caterpillar? As all of the class, they look forward to see what he was on about, and they see a man in a sleeping bag. As he then says, This is the heroics department. Welcome to my class. He would then unzip himself and say, My name is Shoto Aizawa. I'm your homeroom teacher. Hearing this, the class kind of finds it hard to believe that he's their teacher, but and inside of Deku would then grow a huge grin as he yells, You're a racer head, aren't you? Indeed. Now, could you please control your, your strength? Deku then looks down at his hand and sees that he's actually bending his desk and with a look of nervousness, he tries to fix it back in place, making Bakugo laugh as Deku then tells him to shut up. Aren't those things made of metal? Everyone would think. Well, Bakugo just keeps laughing and laughing until Aizawa says to be quiet and everyone gets quiet. And Aizawa would then sigh. That took way too long. You aren't very ambitious, are you? Now take these. He presses a button and from the side of the wall pop out their gym uniforms and they're told to go change, so they go on their way and do so before then coming back out to the field where they meet Aizawa, who says they're doing a quirk apprehension test. Wait, what? What about the orientation, Uraraka would ask. Not needed. At UA, teachers have the freedom to do as they please with their students. They're used to it. Like I said, this is the heroics department. This quickly shuts up Uraraka, just as Aizawa would then say that they will be doing standardized tests they've done before, but they will of course be using their quirks. He throws a softball to Deku and asks how far he could throw in junior high. Oh, um, 300 feet, I think? I meant without your quirk. Deku would then look confused. Yeah, that's what I got. This shocks everyone except Momo, Bakugo, and Todoroki, who have already known how Deku was just like physically gifted, obviously. And they're still like they're still surprised, but not as much as Bakugo, who's just seen him even like lift a truck before. So it's not that big of a deal to him. Dude, I think that's a world record, right? Kirishima would ask. And Deku then says maybe, just as I know, then says that if he can't, if he wants to, he can throw with his quirk and he can go all out. And 1A is hyped to see what he'll get. Deku then gets in a throwing stance as he would then stretch a bit before then letting his arm explode with hockey, turning it black and red, and this reaches the ball as well. Maybe you should duck, Deku would say with a smile as he then heaves the ball into the air, causing a massive shockwave to slightly push everyone back and blow dust in their direction, until soon the ball cannot be seen. How was that? As I would then showed on his tablet that he threw the ball probably to space because it says infinity. It's stuck in a state of constant motion. Nice job, we can pass the atmosphere. That's, that's insane, Sarah would say. He actually threw it up there? Yes, and while intimidated, the class would then finally be just hyped to use their quirks because god damn, it looks fun. And they're just like getting hyped like this dude threw a ball into, into space. But while they're getting excited, Aizawa becomes a bit aggravated as usual. Fun, huh? Then how about this? Whoever gets last place will be exposed by yours truly. Wait, what? Uraka would say. I don't know how many times I have to tell you this, but you need more ambition. This is the heroics department. A huge amount of tension then sets in, showing Aizawa his true colors, and Deku loves him even more for that and does not want to disappoint him, but Uraka says it's not fair since they just got here. Are you really going to say that when natural calamities occur or something, or when villains just attack? That's what we're here for. You can only do what you can in the moment. My thoughts exactly, Aizawa would think. Well, I don't really care about what would say. I'm not losing anyway, so bring it on. Yeah, I'm not going to lose after coming this far, Sato would exclaim. Everyone then agrees, and with no choice, Uraka has to do so as well and participate. So they begin. The yard dash, Deku is paired up with Ida and beats him as he finishes in two seconds, shocking Ida because speed and the whole like being the fastest people as like heroes is kind of his thing and his whole family's thing. Then during the long jump, Deku would just leap over, leap over the sandbox with a single, uh, single bound, and he also breaks the grip strength machine, moves so fast in the side jumps that he looks like a blur. And yet, after all of that, of course, Aizawa says it was a ruse to make them try harder. Surprisingly, some of you show very good promise, so good for you. You can stay. 
Did you guys really not know he was lying? Momo would ask. Of course not, Kaminari would yell, and Deku only laughs at this, saying that that's classic Eraserhead. When you say Eraserhead, you mean the hero capable of incapacitating quirks, correct? Ida would ask. Deku would then say yeah, and slowly they all start to realize who he is. That's about it, as I would say. Go change, and you may leave for today. Your curriculum sheets should be at your classroom by now. Look over them. With these words, uh, he then leaves and everyone goes change. And while they look over their sheets, they also get to know about each other a bit before having to leave. And Deku is accompanied by Bakugo like usual, but then comes along with Raka who yells to wait. The boys then stop and look back to see her run up and Bakugo would ask, what the hell do you want? And Deku would then knock him on the head saying to be respectful, making Bakugo yell at him. Oh, sorry if I was bothering you guys. Nah, Bakugo just sounds like that. You'll get used to it. What's your name again? Uraka then introduces herself and Deku shakes her hand saying that he hopes that they both become fine heroes. The three then proceed to talk until they reach the train and they part ways. And surprisingly enough though, the next day is actually pretty normal. They have English class with President Mike and have lunch pers uh, personally cooked by the hero Lunch Rush. And then it was time for the heroist class as when they come to the class, All Might would enter. I am here, walking through the door like a normal person. Both Deku and Bakugo's face is filled with excitement as the class is surprised that All Might was truly going to be teaching them. For this class, you will be building up your hero foundations through multiple trials, so let's begin right away. Using a remote, he would then bring out suitcases from the wall this time. He would design this gear to better fit and help you with your quirks. Hell yeah, Kirishima would say, our costumes, finally. Quickly, they take the, they take the suitcases containing their costumes and go to change and come out to ground beta looking like true heroes ready for battle and as All Might sees them, he would smile. Now you look like the real thing. Now at least uh, in the looking part, um, the one day could not be more excited, whatever they have, because they look dope as hell, obviously. And Deku's costume, by the way, is a little bit different. He sports white beard's clothes in the original, but his younger self. But um, it is a little, it's not spandex. It's like normal clothes. It's just a little bit stronger with a stronger fiber because he hates spandex clothes because he's a physical fighter. He can't move in those things. And that's about it, actually. That's all he has on. That's it. Young Edward Gate. That's what, that's the thing he has on. Bakugo has on what he already had at the beginning of the fifth season, and Uraraka walks up saying they both look great. I kind of messed up mine, it's way too tight. As he says this, as she says this, Deku then notices Mineta besides him as he says, Ah, heroics are the best. Deku then notices Momo in her costume and thinks, yes, it is. After a while of checking their costumes, All Might would then uh, allow them to begin and explain the trial Although not in the best way because he's not a good teacher, but he tries regardless before then everyone gets to choose lots. It is Deku and Uraraka versus Todoroki and Momo, Bakugo and Shoji versus uh, Kirishima and Hagakure, and etc. Deku and Uraraka are given time to memorize as much of the building's interior as they can, while um, those playing part of the villains are already inside coming up with a plan. As Momo checks on the rocket, she says to Todoroki, I assume you plan to take them on? If you don't mind, Todoroki would say. She would then sigh, saying it's not like she'll, he's like he'll listen to her anyway, but you will have to use your fire side more than ice since he can already easily shatter it. Without another word, he would then leave and go on ahead while outside the building, as he grabs Uraka and picks her up with ease, Deku would then leap into the air and reaches the, floor, uh, their, the third floor and kicks his way in, causing Uraka to panic, but they do land safely as she says, can we have just floated up there with my quirk? Oh, sorry about that, it's just how I do things, you know? Uraka would then say that's fine and they start walking and walking. And while they are, everyone in the modern room begins to ask All Might what Deku's quirk is. But before he can answer, Bakugo then says, Tremor, Tremor. Well, what is it? Kirishima would ask. Just watch and see. Describing it is really weird. This only intrigues the class even more as All Might then agrees that Deku's abilities are truly stunning. He thinks it, of course. He doesn't say anything that much, but he has a big smile. As Deku and Uraka move further and further, they take a turn and feel a cold breeze move in. As they then begin to see their own breath, just as a wave of ice trails towards them, before then exploding into an enormous ice glacier. But Deku would then pull back his hand and punch through the attack, causing a crack to occur, as the ice would then shatter in an instant, ripping through the ground around them, leaving everyone, including Uraraka, in shock. He, he cracked the air, Asui would ask? Young Midori has two quirks, All Might would say. The first is called Quake, allowing him to generate and control shockwaves akin to earthquakes, and the second is called Hockey, allowing him to enhance his physical body dominate the wheels of others, and cancel quirks. What? Everyone would say? No wonder he's so reckless, Tokuyami would think. What do you mean by dominating wheels though, sir? Asked Sato. As he asked this, we then go back to the fight as Deku would be running forwards, and he more icebergs keep coming through, but he just keeps shattering them over and over, using his tremor spheres while keeping Uraraka behind. Izuku, are you sure you're okay? She would ask. Deku would then laugh, saying this is nothing, as he would then bust through another attack, uh, attack of, you know, 
ice, and he sees a nervous Todoroki and Deku would yell, Come at me! As he says this, he releases his conqueror spirit, taunting yet scaring his enemy at the same time, and by instinct, Todoroki's side would burst with fire. What? As he notices this, Deku then appears right in front of him, barehanded, and punches him in the stomach, slamming him into the ground like a ragdoll, causing his eyes to go blank for a second. He's not even using his quirk. It's so much power, Todoroki thought. Deku then yells to go and Uraraka to run past the two, thanking Deku uh, for obviously holding off Todoroki, and he says no problem as he then stands and takes his arm, his hand off Todoroki, who then quickly slams the, uh, his hand into the ground, releasing another wave of ice that quickly freezes Deku in an iceberg. He would then explode with red lightning, causing it to explode as the ice then turns to water and he becomes freed. Come on, use that fire again, that was fun. What kind of monster are you? A competent one. With these words, he would then once again use his conqueror spirit and demand Todoroki use his fire, and once again he releases them, but this time instinctively, he fills the halls with flames in a huge burst. Shit, it's too much. Todoroki then retracts the flames, putting them out, but Deku closes the distance between them with ease and punches him across the face with a smile. What? His clothes aren't even burnt, Mina would say. By instinct, everyone that looks to Bakugo, who would scoff, saying, it's a barrier he deploys using hockey. It's like armor. So essentially speaking, Midoriya's a beast, Kirishima would say. Back at uh, the fight, after receiving Deku's punch, Todoroki can no longer even get up and looks at him as he sees Deku is disappointed. I guess that's all you amount to. He then walks past him, heading towards the top floor, but his observation hockey warns him and he slowly turns with a smile to see Todoroki then burst with fire and ice. Get back over here. With pleasure. The ground below Deku would then crack as he explodes with lightning and pulls back his fist while Todoroki would scream, releasing the most massive attack he can will think of, and as Deku punches, a huge explosion occurs, causing a huge and massive hole to be made to the exterior of the ground they're in. As this happens, we then find Uraraka already engaging with Momo, but she is keeping her away with her bow, her bow staff, and Uraraka is not much of a fighter, so she is outmatched in that kind of area. But then, the two would then notice the ground rumble, as from below, the floor is then ripped up by a shockwave, blowing back Momo and Uraraka in opposite directions. Momo then lands by the rocket and quickly makes some goggles to keep the rubble out of her eyes and dust out of her eyes, and she carefully looks around. Uraraka would then swing a broken pillar that she ripped out because the shockwave kind of reached it, and she would then hit all the rubble, sending it towards Momo, who makes a shield to protect herself, while she then holds her other hand out, preparing for anything that might come her way. This is when Uraraka begins to jump over, trying to fly over Momo and touch the bomb, just as a net is shot at her and she is caught as she falls to the ground, captured. Dang it! As she struggles to get free, Deku would then leap out from the hole and land, easily towering over the two before then seeing Momo create a sword. He will not get past me. Deku would then look around carefully and sees Uraraka tied up, and he then turns to the camera in the room, and he would then give a signal to All Might. What does he mean by that? All Might would ask. And Bakugo then says that he's saying to stop because he and Uraraka lost. Are you sure that's what he means? All Might would ask. He doesn't like winning like this because it's too easy. But he destroyed Toroki easily, Hagakure would say. Bakugo then shrugged his shoulders saying that's just how it is. And All Might would then speak into the comms. The villain team wins. M Momo and Uraraka would say, what? Deku then kneels down and helps Uraraka out of the net by ripping them um, with ease, leaving Momo and Uraraka shot because those things were fortified to the max by some special metal. At least that's what Uraraka could feel. And Momo would ask, why did you do that? This is a team exercise. When a teammate can't win their battle, then I don't want to step into it. If we lose, then we lose. It's just as easy as that. Uraraka now felt like Deku trusted her too much since, you know, he kind of made the whole plan they're carrying out right now. And she feels so carried, so she feels like she failed him, even though he was actually expecting more from her than she thought that he was. And they feel because they're a team, so he's kind of, she's kind of sad. But Deku then notices and pats her on the head as she then looks up to him. It's always next time, right? In the meantime, I'll help you get stronger. Oh, okay. She then pumps her fist and Deku puts a thumbs up, making Momo slightly blush. As Momo would then say, wait, what about Todoroki? Deku then says he's out cold. Uh, get it? The dude would then burst into laughter as we then cut to a few hours later. And obviously that joke sucked, but that's kind of the point. He's doing it on purpose. He just likes to make people laugh, you know? So after this, soon uh, the trials are done. Bakugo and Ojiro won their battle because uh, Bakugo was a beast. And everyone was evaluating themselves after this, uh, mostly by Momo more than All Might. And she criticized herself a lot. As everyone readies to go back to into their uniforms, they all say that the fight between Deku and Todoroki was just like awesome. They're gathered in the monitoring room and they say that was awesome. I wish I could hear what you were saying, but man, that was just intense, you know? 
I didn't think you would have two quirks, though, Rocco would say. Kaminari would then say, Bakugo was just bulldozing through everything. I guess you'd have to be that way if Midori was your childhood friend, am I right? You have no idea, Bakugo would say. As with an almost depressed tone, he then makes them wonder how hard it must have been to deal with that kind of strength in his daily life. The class starts to know each other and introduce themselves, but Todoroki misses out on it and he wakes up in the nurse's office and he quickly he sits up to see Recovery Girl. You're finally up. I, I lost? Yes, you did. Sorry, kid. Here, have some candy. She then gives him some candy, which he receives despite being a bit confused, and she says that he was going to be fine because he just seems to be overwhelmed. He's not that hurt. Deku held back. Have you ever used your fire slide before? He then looks at his left hand and says, No, I haven't. He then time skips to the next day. As Deku and Bakugo arrive at school, they find the gates occupied by a bunch of reporters and they'll be flashing their cameras and asking a passing Ida what he thought about All Might. As he was answering, Deku and Bakugo then walk by, instantly gaining some attention as Deku then says hello to Ida. So, what the hell are these bastards doing here? Bakugo would ask. Whoa, he is huge and he looks like he's about to explode someone's head off. I'll blow up your face if you don't stop flashing those cameras at me. And this absolutely scares the shit out of the reporters as Ida then tells him to calm down while he follows them into the school and the adults are simply left bewildered. But doesn't that kid kind of look familiar, one of the reporters would say? As they start to think of a resemblance, however, comparing it to Ida, this is not Deku or Bakugo, they're talking about Ida, Azawa then comes up and asks them to leave and when they refuse to, he would then activate the Yui barrier to keep them out. After this, classes then begin as 1A is in their classroom and Azawa would say, alright, I saw the recordings. Not bad, but Todoroki, you need to get used to using your flames more efficiently. You look awkward out there. Yes, Sensei, Todoroki would say. And that's about it, as I would say. Honestly, I have nothing else more to say. Let's move on to another topic. Picking a class president. As soon as he says this, this makes everyone spring out of their seats saying that they wanted the position, except for Deku, who uh, just lays back in his chair, and eventually Ida gets everyone to do things democratically, so they vote. The outcome is Deku being nominated for president while Momo is vice, but he says, nah, I'm good, as he would lay back in his desk and everyone would say, what? I don't want to. I want to do whatever I want. I can't do that if I'm tied down by some kind of position. I kick and punch things. I aspire to do that for the rest of my life. That's a terrible aspiration, Asuki would say. My point exactly, Deku would say. Besides, he does more suited for this than I am. Him and Momo, they're the academics of the class after all. Ida feels wrong about having to get the position this way though, and says no, but Momo then manages to make everyone think about coming back to this subject later. For now, they should go to lunch. At lunch, Ida sits with Deku, Uraka, and Bakugo, and he would ask, If I may um, ask, uh, do you always eat this much? Ida would say, as all eyes would be on Deku, who had a ton of food like before him, and as he digs into it, he would say this is normal for him. It's like you're on a bodybuilder eating regiment constantly, Uraka would say. He's also just a huge glutton, Bakugo would say. Deku then keeps digging in and in, and after swallowing all of it, he then says that Ida should take the position, but Ida says that he's honestly not comfortable with taking it that way because it's kind of wrong, and this makes Uraka point out how proper he's always trying to be, and so Ida says he wants to be like his big brother in genuine. This comes as a shock and a surprise to the group because that means that he's loaded, but also they notice that the two are very similar in appearance now that he mentioned it. No wonder, Baku would say, and how the hell is a four eyes like you so unconfident in himself? While this does hurt, Ida cannot deny it, but Uraka tries to say something to cheer him up, just as she notices someone standing behind her. Todoroki, she would say? Todoroki then stares down Deku, who would then look at him while still eating. Worse up. Swallow the food first, he would say. Deku would then do so, and he asks again what's up, and Todoroki would then ask how he did what he did before. Oh, you mean my hockey? It's all about will. I guess mine is stronger than yours. This only makes Todoroki more frustrated, as that sounds super vague, but before he can even say anything more, alarms start to go crazy and catch everyone off guard. Level 3 warning. Lockdown will now commence. All the doors in the cafeteria just close and causing everyone to start panicking as they all then begin to bump into one another and people then start to ask what level 3 like means as an alert and someone would then say, it's a case of villain arise. This only makes them panic even more and by accident, Deku's food would be knocked to the ground. Oh shit, here it comes. Baku with things, he then covers his ears making Ida, Uraka and Todoroki do the same. Shut up! Deku would say as his spirit would then overwhelm the panicking students, freezing them in their tracks, and all the attention is then turned to him as he would then walk on top of his table, looking angry. It wasn't fear that was just overtaking everyone, but they felt like they had to do what this per like person was tell like telling them. It was obedience, like they had to. As everyone at this table takes their hand off their ears, they find themselves shaking. I I I feel so scared. 
for some reason, Uraka would say, it's not my control, Toroki thought. I just want to listen for some reason. Deku would then sigh as he told everyone to look outside the window and as they are told this, the pressure on them disappears and they feel like a huge weight has been taken off their backs but they also start looking out the window and see that reporters from this morning were the reason why this happened. Oh, that's all it was? Man, we freaked out for nothing. That was so embarrassing. But, but the bear is broken. How do they do that? As everyone starts to calm down, Deku then walks back down with his head hanging as Baku would then tap his shoulder. Don't worry, I'll pay for pizza on the way home. Thanks, Deku would say in a quite somber tone as though as those who see him would then be like confused. He said about the food that much? And now they start to kind of feel sad because the man just wanted to eat and they had to get all uppity and shit. So after this incident has occurred, the police were called and drove the reporters away. However, how the barrier was broken still remained a mystery. Business as usual, as usual then continued, but Deku was faced with a personal uh, dilemma as when he went back to class, he was told by everyone, you need to become president. He finds himself surrounded at his desk and everyone says he's got to be the class president now. Dude, you were like scary as hell when you yelled. Kaminari would yell. How does that qualify me? No, like you were demanding, sir would say. Like how a pro proper class president should be. And you were scary. Deku then looks around and sees everyone's eyes filled with hope that he become president. He says, Sensei, can I have two vice presidents? Aizawa, as he sleeps in his bag, then says he honestly doesn't care. Making Deku laugh. Mama, Ida, do my vices? Ida, hearing this, then says he will be honored. And Momo smiles, saying, why not? If you don't mind, I'll just bark the orders, you know? You guys do the important stuff. Did you just want to do less work, so you would ask? As Deku confidently says yes, they cannot help but laugh, but they know that while he doesn't plan to do much, they don't have to worry about anything when he's around, because he's Deku. Quite likely this year, aren't we? As all thought. And this brings us to the end of this part. Welcome to the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this first part. And now that I look back at it, honestly, there were still some things that I could have fixed up to make this easier for myself. The script wasn't written bad this time. I actually perfected it. But there were still things that caught me off guard when I was rereading everything back. So I'm going to do better on the second part, which will be awesome as hell, by the way. And also, just in advance, I'm going to tell you, every single part of this will be either 50 minutes or 40 minutes long. This one was supposed to be 50 minutes. I guess I kind of miscalculated, but it's a special regardless. So thank you so much for the, the love, you know. And I'm just going to its only inspire me to make more and more videos. And now that I have a setup, by the way, I have a setup. I brought my PC back. I bought a PC. Oh, my God. I actually have space in this one. It's two terabytes. And I could not be more freaking happy to be able to post content like this. And I'm going to go in on the editing. And hopefully I do it correctly. I'm going to do everything I can from now on to try and give you all content like in the best way. So I'm going to probably have to change the schedule again. And for those of you who don't make it here, it's kind of your fault. But, uh yeah and also if you have noticed i have subtitles back on so you're welcome for that all right uh that's all i have to say stay safe it is a weekend i don't know about y'all but we got a professional day for teachers to grade our stuff so i ain't got nothing to do on monday so i'll probably just record again and if i can i'll record during the weekend so i can do that uh, i can post it later in you know the uh the next week and that is all i have to say don't forget to like and subscribe hit that notification button to stay up to date on all my videos and that is all peace Oh, darling, if I had bought you flowers, would you still be here by my side? Yeah, I thought this moment could be ours. While I'm walking only through the night, you can break my bones. Break. Can stay with him.